Hey guys, Willie James here from Dreamhouse Music and in today's video we're going to talk about nice gospel chords in C major. I'm going to choose one or two song examples. I'm going to show you how I take basic chords, make them nice from a beginner perspective. All right, so let's jump into it. Before we do that though, if you'd like to learn more about gospel piano uh, for beginners, um, click the link below in the description to get more resources and also like, share and subscribe um to get access to our weekly videos all right all right let's get to it nice gospel chords in c major all right we gotta go through foundation you gotta know your scale okay um we're in the key of c so we're dealing with the c major scale all right so whatever key you're with you gotta know the scale in that key so let's go c major c d e f g a b seven notes to each scale okay this is the major scale. All other scales are built from the major scale. This is the foundation scale that you got to know, which is the major scale. There's 12 of them for the 12 different keys. We're in the key of C, so we're playing the C major scale. Okay, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Seven unique notes. All the melodies, chords, progressions are built from the scale. Okay, that's why it's important for you to know your scale inside and out. And not just know the letter names, but also um, the assigned number, okay, numerical values, all right? In gospel, we use the number system, all right? All it is, you're assigning a numerical value to each note in the scale. So it's just from one to seven. C is one, D is two, E is three, F is four, G is five, A is six, B is seven, right and c is one so if you know if you know how to count it's not hard one two three four five six seven everything we do with chords melody songs is built from the scale don't skip this part okay very important foundation now next step diatonic chords okay so from this scale we're gonna build some chords and basically we're gonna build um what are called the diatonic chords on each of these notes so C will have its own chord D will have its own chord E F G A B C right and so forth here they are all right so on C the first chord the quality of the chord is major okay and it's the C major okay how did I build this chord well um, from a beginner's per perspective it's you just count up in three so from C you count one two three including C so one two three gives me the second note in the chord and then count three from E, one, two, three. G is three steps from E, okay? So it's in thirds, okay? And I'm counting up the notes in the scale, right? So the C is in the scale, the E is in the scale, and the G is in the scale as well, all right? I could also pull it up on my diatonic chords chart. I have a diatonic chords playbook. It has all the diatonic chords in all 12 keys, not just C. If you want to get access to that, click the link below. Uh, grab my PDF and the quick start course to get access. See, I have all the diatonic chords in all keys with the scale, everything. It's a quick, nice uh, cheat sheet you could use, print, um, whatever you need it for. Help you learn all your gospel tunes, okay? In all 12 keys. Very nice resource. All right, so click the link to get access to that. So let's get back to it. Let's, let's pull it up. Let's pull up the scale. All right, so as I was saying, these are the, this is the C major scale, these are the degrees, all right? Okay, so the C major, we're talking about the first diatonic chord. C, right here, is the one, E is the three, G is the five, okay? One, the three, and the five. Okay, we just counted up in thirds. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? All right, so that's the diatonic chord built over C. All right, over D, if we do the same thing, the quality of the chord is minor, okay? So if we count from D, remember D is the second note in the scale, we're building the diatonic chord. Right? Diatonic, if I didn't explain, means all the notes in the chord is from the scale. That's all diatonic means. I know it sounds fancy, but DFA, is that in the scale? Yes, it is, you could see, right? Maybe I'll pull up my chart. D, F, and A is from the scale. So that's why D minor is diatonic, okay? And it's built in the same format, counting from counting in thirds. Okay, so from D, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or you can 
look at it as I'm skipping a note, right? One, two, three, skip the E. One, two, three, I've skipped the G. You can look at it like that as well. Okay, so let's fast forward a bit. So this is the first diatonic chord in C. D minor is the second. E minor is the third. F major is the fourth. G minor is the fifth. A minor is the sixth. B is the seventh. And this, this chord is uh, diminished. Okay, and back to the one. Okay, so this is the foundation that you need to know inside and out. So if I tell you, hey, play the four chord in C. Oh, I know, that's an F major. Play the six chord, man. We're going to the six. Oh, okay, six. The band leader says, hey, go to the two. Boom, right? So you should know that inside and out. Again, I have all the diatonic chords here, see, in every key. So I have C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A, B, C, A and B, sorry, A minor and B diminished. So you could see here, uh, it's just going up the scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Okay? All right. So once you know your diatonic chords and you have it mastered because you want to become a master, um, all right, let's talk about ways to make these diatonic chords nice and fit them into gospel piano, okay? Uh, well, there's three ways I use to make the chords nice, okay? The first is stacking, and stacking is simple. If I'm going too fast, you can always pause, rewind, do what you gotta do, okay? Stacking refers to just repeating the notes in the chord. That's it. So if I have C, E, G, I could repeat the notes to make this chord bigger, okay? So, um, C, E, G, I'm playing it with my right hand. What about my left hand? Well, I'll play the one, which is C, and the five, which is G, on the bottom, like so, boom. That's my typical beginner voicing. I always like to do this. This is where I work from. So I've just stacked the chord, right? Just from these three notes in the diatonic chord. Boom, like that. Okay? So I'm just gonna use uh, the first chord, C major, as an example. I could do it for the rest of the diatonics, right? I could do the same principle. I'm just using C as an example. All right, so stack. I can stack some more, right? Because I have more fingers left. Right? What about the C up top here? I could stack the C on top. Automatic, bigger voicing. Voicing is just an arrangement of notes. Okay, how you arrange the notes. Okay, so from that basic C, I've stacked all the way to this. I could even stack some more in my left hand. You could just copy me, right? I like to do what's called the stretch 10. I'll put the C an octave lower. And I'll play an E. I'll stretch my thumb over like this. Keeping that same voicing in my right hand, C, E, G, C, or the one, the three, the five, and the one. Okay, I got the one and the three in the bottom. I call it a stretch 10 because the distance between C and E is 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. Very nice open voicing. Okay? Very nice. If you can't stretch from the C to the E, you can move the C up here and play like so. Use whatever fingers are comfortable. Okay, so that's called stacking. And depending on how long your fingers are, you could even stack some more, right? Um, another thing, or another way, sorry, I use to um, make my chords nice is inversions. Okay, so inversion means you're just flipping the chord. Well, no, a better definition is you're arranging the notes differently. Okay, so stacking is repeating. So, you know, repeating the C or repeat the G repeat the C that's stacking right repeat the C down here you're just repeating I've just used these three notes and repeated them that's stacking inversions however if I go back to the basic diatonic chord C major is you are rearranging the position of the note so the bottom note becomes on top like that boom they call that first inversion okay so the basic one two three one two three position is called root position all right built in thirds in classical, they call it root position because the, the 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 name of the chord, the note the note name is on the bottom C. Invert, boom, C on top. That's first inversion. Do it again. Bottom note goes on top. That's second inversion. So we got root inversion, first inversion, second inversion, and if we flip it again, put the G on top, we're back at the original position, just an octave higher. Okay, it's the same thing down here. That's another way to nice up, nice in your chords, right? It creates different voicings, 
right, inversions. So I could keep the one and the five in my left hand. Depending on the song or what sound I'm looking for, I could use these inversions to instantly change the quality of the chord a little bit. Okay? That's inversions, a very simple. Now, another thing I'd like to talk about is, um, let's talk about, we can use inversions and stacking together, right? So if I take the diatonic chord and I stack the C, meaning I repeat the C up here like this, right? Now I have a four note chord. Instead of just three notes, I have four notes, right? When I invert a four note chord, it means when I invert a four note chord, it means the middle note goes on the bottom. Okay? So like so, and then E, G, C, E. That's the next inversion. All right? Hope I didn't lose you. Basic root position, stack, and then invert. All right? I can invert again. G, C, E, G this time. And then if I invert one more time, I go back to the beginning. So, keeping the one and five voicing in my left hand basic, I could do these inversions. The bigger, It's just a bigger form of the basic chord. Right? In the left hand, I could do the stretch 10 between the C and the E. Pregiation, you can create nice melodies. Okay, like so. Alright, so I've used the principle of um, stacking and inversion. So let's go back to the basic. Alright, so we got this. Sometimes I do even an E on the bottom. So this inversion here. So the E, I put it on the bass instead. So this is an inversion. Right? This is very typical in gospel. It's called a 1 over 3. So basically, you take the middle note and put it on the bottom. Okay, All right, and then, then I can repeat the C here. So that's another thing I like to do. Or maybe I want to put the G on the bottom as an inversion. So I'm using this inversion and stacking principle, right? So maybe I put the G on the bottom and the E here. All right. A general rule of thumb is in the left hand, since the frequencies are lower, you want to keep the notes spaced apart. By space, I mean the steps in between each note. So the bottom note and E here, one, two, three, four, five, six. You generally want to keep a space bigger than five, so, um, you know, I could do this, but then this sounds muddy, or I could do this. See how that sounds muddy, right? I wouldn't play this, right? This is stacking. Well, it's an, in it's an inverted stack, right? I'll take out the G. Maybe that's a nicer voicing, right? Or I'll take out the E up here. Right, so back to my diatonic in my right hand, C, E, G. Right, so you have this, you have this, you have this. Right, okay, very nice voicings. You could do the stack in your right hand and do the same thing. Again, you could pause the video for fingering and to see what I'm doing. Or I'll keep the stretch 10 too. Right, see how you could do so much just repeating the notes with stacking and inversions. Very nice. Right? You can create very nice voicings. Um, you might have heard drop two. Drop two is very popular as well. Basically, you take the major chord, drop out the second note, put it an octave lower. An octave lower means eight steps lower. So the E goes down here. Creates a nice open voicing. All right? Hope I didn't lose you here. Take the major chord, the diatonic chord, in root position, drop out the two. Boom. Just like that. Very nice sounding. All right, so depending on the mel melody of the song or uh, the sound you're going for, you could use that drop two principle. Take any major chord, right? Drop out the middle, boom, just like that. Okay. So I did that the drop two to the root position. What about the second, in the first inversion? Sorry, I could do the drop two here as well. Take the G, put the octave lower, boom. All right. Hopefully I didn't lose you there. All I did, first inversion of C, E, G, root, first inversion, drop two, boom. I could do it again to the next inversion. What about this inversion, G, C, E? Take out the C, drop it down here. So I'll play 
these inversions in drop to form, right? As a beginner, you gotta use fingers that are comfortable for you, okay? Right? So that's the um, the root position in drop two, right? The E is there, boom. All right, that's a nice voicing as well. I took the G, put it down here. Take it out, sorry. And then the second inversion, take the C out, put it here. Again, you could pause and rewind this video if you need to take a closer look at my fingers, right? And you just work your way through. Use fingers that are most comfortable for you, right? Right? And just you can keep going up. You gotta manipulate your fingers and uh, sometimes you gotta um, cross under with your thumb or cross over like I'm doing here. Right? So drop two is a very nice voicing to uh, to use. All right? Let's talk about chord extensions, uh, which means you're adding more degrees to the notes, to the diatonic chord, sorry. So let's bring up our diatonic chord chart here. So if you go back to C, E, G, right, using the number system, C is one, E is three, G is five. It's built in this one, two, three, one, two, three format, right? The basic diatonic chord. Well, I could add more notes from the scale, right? All right, now this is not stacking. I'm adding actually different notes now. This is chord extension, right? So I'm adding different degrees. Degrees is note, right? So I could add the seven, right? If I do the same principle. One, two, three, one, two, three. Well, I could do the same from G. One, two, three. That lands me on B. This is called a C major seventh, okay? So the major seventh is because the B is diatonic to the chord. Sorry, to the key of C, because B is just a seventh degree. Another way to look at it, C is seven steps from B. If you count up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is a major seventh because it's diatonic to the key of C. If it was B flat, that's not diatonic because the key of C has no flats or sharps, okay? A sharp, B flat, not there. So that's why it's called a major seventh. C, major seventh. Okay, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, C major seventh. So you could build extensions using this one, two, three cut per format. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right? So instead of diatonic, depending on the song, you could add a seventh to it. Very simple. See? Look. It's the first, the third, the fifth, and the seventh, which is B. If I'm looking at the scale. So if you know your scale, you could easily build nice extended chords. Okay, and check this out. You can apply now the principle of um, inversions and stacking to this. So let's talk about inversions. Well, now if we invert this, C, E, G, B, right, the bottom goes on top. Okay, so now it becomes E, G, B, C. Okay, you see that? I just put the bottom one on top. Right now, I get this weird voicing. So I have this. I'm just inverting this four note chord. Right? Invert again. E goes on top. Okay. Invert again. Right? Oh, that sounds nice. Pretty. Right? And then back to the original one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. This is called root position. Okay? What if I do the stretch 10 in my left hand instead of just the 1 and the 5? I could do this. See how that sounds nice? Alright. So, chord extensions. Now, you could add the stacking principle to the 7th chords as well. So I can repeat the B. What if I repeated the B here? Right? Right here. Ooh, that sounds pretty. Hope I didn't lose you. Diatonic C major, turned it into a seventh chord, which is my third way, chord extensions, add in different degrees, add the seventh. Seven chords are very nice in gospel, okay? And I stack, so I repeat. Stack means repeat, so I can repeat the B down here. Sounds like an R and B chord, right? Right? 
right? And what if I did the f 1 and the 5 in the bottom? Well, now I'd have to play the C and B with my thumb like this. So I'm cheating. I'm using my thumb to play two notes. And I play the E, G, and the B on top like so. And I do the 1 and the 5 in the bottom. Alright, very nice chord. Now I could do different voicings in my left hand, right? I could do the E and the G. No, I could do the stretched end. Alright, depending on the sound you're going for. Or I could do this. Alright, all depending on the song. And what sounds good to you, right? So there's like some exploration on your part, right? Music is all about creativity, okay? Seventh chords. So we're talking about extensions now, okay? Extending the chord. And then I applied, um, you know, the inversions and stacking to this. All right? I could also do um, this inversion, this inversion, and this inversion, as I just said. And I could do a stretch ten in my left hand, like so. Okay. Very nice. Another thing I could do is I could do um, even ninth chords. Now, depending on your skill level, if you're a mid to um, late beginner, you could do ninth chords as well. If nine chords are too much for you, that's okay. But it's the same principle. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so I have this beautiful sounding. What is that? How much notes is that? One, two, three, four, five. Five notes. I've just counted up in threes. All right, so this is called C major nine. Why is this a nine? Well, the distance between C and D is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I have the, the one, two, three format. Because chords are built in thirds, okay? By thirds, I mean one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The distance between the notes are in thirds. Simple, right? Now, I don't have five. Well, I can't play all five of these with my right hand. Depending on how long your fingers are, you could just play the, these notes with your right hand and do the original diatonic one and five in your left, like so. So depending on the song, from this basic chord, you could do a nine. And then you could adjust your voicings in your left hand. Okay, so those are ninth chords. All right, so we talked about, what did we talk about so far? Well, we've talked about chord stacking, which is repeating notes. We've talked about inversions, right? Rearranging the notes. And then we need to talk about chord extensions. We did talk about extensions, which are the seventh and ninth chords. You can extend some more, but as a beginner, you shouldn't get into that until you've mastered uh, these basics here. We talked about the drop two as well for major chords. Um, let's let's do a song. Let's do a song and and see how we can apply apply some of these to a song. So let's take um, what's the easy song? Uh, uh, let's go with Waymaker. All right, so. Waymaker, the progression is what? You are here, it's a four chord, right? Da 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 da, four one, I worship you. It's a five chord, I worship you. I'm playing the basic chords in diatonic form, right? So the four, and then the one. Play it down here. And the five, and the six. So, how can we apply some of those principles to make these chords nice? Well, for the four chord, I like to add sevenths, major seventh, right? The distance between F and E, counting up the C major scale, because we're in the key of C, is seven. Counting up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, I'm not counting black keys, because these no black keys are not in the key of C. So I'm just counting up purely the white keys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're in a different key, you count up the scale accordingly to the... Um, notes in the scale okay so one two three four five six seven distance between f and e is seven so we got f major seventh okay repeat the one and the five you are here now this top note e is not the melody here it's actually a up here so i'll take this chord what i'll do is i'll take the the uh the one and the five on the bottom F is, we're in a different chord, we're not on C anymore, because we're on F. 
all right the F now is is one okay so F and C is one and five because we're in the context of F major right now all right so I'll do that and I'll do this you are here oh nice and open all right all I did was I took this I stacked these notes repeated them on the bottom or you could take them out well in this case I just took out the F and I repeated the A up here right see that you are here instead of the basic you are here here right? beginner chord right moon and you are here nice and open see that all right you can also add a ninth chord to this too all right which is what you guessed it G right you just count up in threes one two three from the seven we'll give you a nine all right you are here all right you can do that or what I would do I would do probably this I'd add the ninth there with my left hand so I'm playing F C G with my left hand and then the rest of the stacked notes with my right hand see that see how that sounds thick and lush all, right. all from just this diatonic adding the seventh adding the ninth and then using the principle of stacking and inversions to create this nice so you can experiment all right as a general principle with your left hand, keep the left hand voicings spaced out, right? So when you're stacking, you wouldn't stack like this, right? Because that sounds muddy. You create some space. I recommend spaces greater than five. So I mean, so between F and G, that's two. It's, it's too muddy. Even F and A, right? Too muddy. F and C, that's okay, right? And then I want more space. I could do the E here. Or if I want more space, I could do the G. So you got to be able to visualize the chord. So the F, the C, and the G was from here, right? The F and the G, right? Well, the F, F, C, and G, I put it in my left hand, F, C, and G. And then the rest of the chord, I stacked the A, C, E, right? and the A. You are here, moving in our time. Diatonic C. Okay, what can we do here? Well, I could do a nine, right? So the nine is the same as the two. I forgot to mention that, right? So in the C, we're in the, we're in a C chord. So D is the two. One, two. If you look at the scale, right? D is the two. But if you count an octave lower, it's a nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? That distance is nine. I can add the fifth to create that nice voicing. You are here moving in it. Uh, sorry, I don't know the lyrics. All right? This is C major in second inversion. Sorry. One root one two. Second inversion. One five two for the one five nine. Like this. Alright? I worship you. So that's how I would do the one chord, right? You can even do like uh, instead of this, you could do with this at make it a seventh, uh -huh. C major seven. I worship you are here, move it right? I just move the C from the B, and then I add the D here, right? Again, you could pause and rewind this video to see what I'm doing. Da 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 da. I worship you. Basic diatonic, basic form. What can I do with this? Let's do a drop two here. Okay, I worship you. Boom, take out the middle. Remember drop two, take out the second note, boom. Okay, gospel, what's popular? Add the ninth as well, which is the two. So in G, A is two, one, two. If you know your G major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So take the G major, add the add two. All right, drop the third like that. Boom. Very nice voicing. All right, so that's called the add two. I call it the add two. So I'm doing the add two over the three. So basic diatonic, add the two, drop the third. Boom, like that. I worship you. A minor. What do I like to do with A minor? 
I like to do the add two as well. Add the add two, but I'll take out the one this time. All right, that's on the six. So you are here. Da -da 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 -da. I worship you. This is the five chord in drop two position. Add in the ninth or the two. I worship you. All right? Ooh, I like that tension there. All right? What is that? Well, it's basically the A minor, add two, drop the root. So you get this. And I move the A down here. So you see how I'm using the principle of, you know, stacking um, and inversions to create these nice chords. Okay. So it's a, there's a lot you can experiment. You are here. Da, 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 da. I can do a pregiation. Right? I'm just creating melody from the chord. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Right? I could do F major 7th that way. Da, 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 da. I worship you. Ooh, that's a nice thing. Embellishment gospel guys do all the time. They slide from the 3. Like they go from... Right? They slide into the 3 and then even into the 2, so... They slide into the three, so. Alright, so slow. Right, and then adding the chord around it. This might take some practice, especially if you're uh, new. Right, I worship you. Alright. Now, to go into the four, you are here. I pass on the three. You are here. Over the three, I do the drop two from C. Right? Because E is the uh, second note in the C major diatonic chord. So I put it on the bottom, but I'll change up this. I'll do an add to. Drop out the E. Boom. Then I'll stack the G here. And I'll stack a C here. This is one of my favorite voicings over the three in gospel. Which uh, you can use this in place of the one chord. Okay, just like so. You could pause the video and take it in. Again, diatonic, add the add to, just count up two from the root, All right? Or add nines, whatever you want to say. The D is the add nine or the add two, however you want to name it. Drop the three, boom, like so. So the three goes down here, stack the G, which means to repeat it. And then I can repeat the C here for that nice open voicing. So you are here, moving in this land, right? I worship you, I worship you. You are here. You can create melodies with the chord by breaking up the chord. Right? I worship you, I worship you. You are a way maker, miracle worker. I'm just doing an F add two or F add nine here. So diatonic, add two, stack the F and the C in the bottom, boom. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. I like that voicing too. Light in the darkness. What is that? Right? Well, it's the the sus2 or add2 second inversion boom like that so i took the diatonic add2 drop the 3 and it inverted this so you can invert your sus2 or add2 chords like so over the one instead of this basic c e g do this voicing waymaker miracle worker I know I can't sing. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, right? That is who you are. Waymaker, right? It's another voicing. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. Ooh, what's this? Oh my goodness. 
That's the drop two. Right? But I inverted this. That's another thing. So the GAD now becomes, I just put the G up here. Boom, like that. Or I could have kept the G with my left hand, like so. Again, pause and rewind the video if you need to uh, take in these chords. So these are all just from basic, my basic diatonic chords. I'm using my three ways, my inversions, my stacking, um, the drop two, so you're dropping notes, you know, changing the arrangement of the, the chords. Right, you are here. I'm just gonna play a little bit. Play a little bit. Da 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 da. I worship you. Right, I worship you. You are here. And uh, oh, what was that? I just did a little uh voicing there, a little passing chord. That's G major and um, you know. Second inversion without the G, so it's like a drop two. So I'm d doing some melodic passings here into the F major seven. That's another voicing too. See how much there's so much variety and so much things you can do, right? Right? I worship you. Right? I can even extend this. Oof! Right hand. What is this? Well, it's just. From the G, my add to just inversion, right? Right? So it might take some time for you to understand these add twos or sus twos. So I just stacked. Remember, I'm taking the diatonic, right? The middle and dropping it on the bottom, stacking the G there. Right? This is all in place of the five chord. Okay? So you are here. Da, 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 da. Right? I worship you. I worship you. Right? Now I'm stacking even more. Wow. Depending on your skill level, this might be like just over your head. But basically, A minor, do the add to. Right, took out the A, repeated the C. Right, so I get this. Depending on your skill level and your finger strength, I'm doing the the one, the five, and the two. I'm I'm on the A minor, which is a six chord. So I voiced it like this. Okay. So again, pause, rewind the video, take these in. Right? So the diatonic form, you are here, moving in this place. Four to the one chord, I worship you. Five chord, I worship you. Right? Some basic extensions, you are here. Right? Seventh chord into the one. Put the nine, which is the D, I worship you. Remember, that's the basic add nine or add two chord, I worship you. Right? It's the voicing for the A minor. Or I could do this. Right? Or I could do this. You are here. Right, look at that. Wow. Da, 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 da. Right? I worship you. You are our way maker. Yeah. Light in the darkness. Woo! Oh my goodness. What was that? A minor. I moved the fifth up a, a half step. I turned it into an F major. So it's like a four over six. So instead of straight minor, that's another thing too. Transform your minors, turn the six, which in this case, because we're in the key of C is an A minor, turn it into a four chord, which is F, and use the bass, which is the six. So like this, so it's a four over six. Four chord over the six, okay, right? And then what did I do? I, I stacked it. So, well, I inverted it. Right? Stacked it. Repeated the C. Did the drop two. And then repeated the F. Right? 
I worship you. A different type of quality, right? You are here. I'm just running through ideas, right? Da 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 da. Right? I worship you. Ooh, four over six. Da da da. Okay. So hopefully you could um, run with some of those. Again, depending on your skill level, you might need to work on this stuff, work on your finger strength. Finger strength. The bigger the chords, the principle is you're just spreading out your fingers as much as possible to fit the chord. And you could organize your fingers as, as you see fit, right? So there's a lot of exploration up here. So hopefully, um, you know, you were able to learn some things. I might have a part two to this, but uh, for now, hopefully this was helpful. Peace. Want to learn how to play even more gospel chords without theory overwhelm? Simply download the top seven beginner gospel chords PDF by clicking the link in the description. You'll learn about the top seven must know gospel chords and how to use them in gospel songs you already know. Again, to get access, hit that link below and I'll see you on the inside.